All right, here I'm playing Galactic Civilizations 4 again, and I had produced a video showing some alpha footage, the first two hours of me playing it, a few days back. And, well, after I shut the camera off, I kept playing, and I got a little bit better of an understanding of the state that the game is in. So, I just want to do a quick follow-up for that, explaining what it is that I've stumbled across, and, well, let's just say... It's not ready for prime time yet. The game, aside from the fact that a lot of features are not yet implemented, things such as, like, fleet battles, all you do is see, like, the quick battle. You don't see, like, a more detailed view of the fight that's going on. I don't know if the final game's going to have that feature or not, but the previous games in the series did. I'm sort of missing that. There's a number of bugs also. Like, every once in a while, it gets stuck on the turn of um, what uh, Civilization number 15 that gets stuck on that one. And then you can go and actually get it going again by hitting the escape button and then back out of the menu and then it goes and continues onward. It just gets stuck until you jump into the menu and then back out. There's also a bug I keep running into where it becomes impossible to actually destroy an enemy ship, you'll attack it, the battle will take place, but no damage on either side will occur. But, like, your turn will get used up. And this will happen until you save and then reload that save. So, weird little bugs like that are implement are there and it will have to be fixed. Of course, the game's still an alpha, so bugs are going to be there and missing features are going to be missing. Other than that, though, I would say that the game is horribly off-balance. So I'm playing with, I guess, 15 other um, AI civilizations, and I'd say I've only run into a few so far, but I believe, anyway, that their AI is not that well-suited right now to actually researching and managing their own civilization. So let's find this enemy civilization here. Well, they're not my enemy anymore at the moment, anyway. And, okay, so here's the civilization. Whoa, a jerky animation there. <laughs> She's pissed off. We were at war for quite a while. Notice here are the technologies that I have that she doesn't. 26. She has 8 that I don't have. Let's find another civilization. Now, here's one that I am actually at war with. Uh, nope, I can't uh, trade with them. I can't enter into negotiations with them. How about these? Okay, so this one has one technology that I don't possess, and I have 34 that they don't possess. The point being, though, is that the, anim the other, the AI civilizations are not really capable of researching technology appropriately. They've fallen way behind the technological curve. So, even though I haven't really put a lot of effort into researching weapons technology, my technology overall is so much further advanced at them that I'm more or less just steamrolling over them in any war that I've been involved in. Now, this civilization here, the uh, Refuge or whatever it's called, uh, this one here, declared war on me for some reason that I don't understand, and the uh, she was completely unable to mount any kind of offense against me. Now, the earlier games in the series had that problem too. The AI would be a little bit too quick to engage in a war where it couldn't logistically put together an offense against me. But in this case, seemed to lack any ability to fight the war whatsoever. At no point was I ever attacked by one of her ships. In fact, a number of these planets belonged to her, and I was able to go in and attack them and invade them. With the exception of the capital here. Now, this was the capital, and it was actually the first of her planets that I came across, and I decided to, you know, throw the weight of my military at this one planet. And I was never able to go and in successfully invade it. And the reason was, even though I had technologically superior ships and a greater number of them, one of the features or the ways that these games work is by only being able to organize your fleets in 
by um, to a certain amount of ships based on your logistics capability. So let's find one of my fleets here. Now this is one of mine. As you'd see here, it's listed as logistics up here, 10 out of 10, meaning there are 10 logistics points forming this fleet. Now this big ship here as uh, is taking up uh, it doesn't say oh yeah yeah it does it's taking up six of those logistics points this one here is taking up two and then these two are each taking up one point so this is the largest fleet that I'm capable of building which has tens logistics points and I am therefore limited in the amount of ships that I can put in any one fleet there doesn't seem to be a limitation on the number of ships that you can have orbiting a planet, though. So even though I was technologically superior and able to mount a vastly superior offense, because there's no limitation on ships in orbit, at least that's what it seems, there are so many ships around this planet here that I was never able to actually attack it. I was never able to successfully attack it. I don't know how much damage I was doing, but it was never enough to actually invade, land uh, transport ships and invade. This this planet up here, or rather maybe it was this one, one of these two, was a planet that I did have to invade, and I did manage to eventually, but they never managed, they never had a huge fleet circling those planets. Meanwhile, all the other planets, the ones that like aren't a core world, like this was a core world, this one down here wasn't. You don't actually need transports and they to invade them, and they weren't uh, that well defended. So I just took a regular old ship, parked it in orbit, and it spent one or two turns attacking it, and eventually conquered that planet. Now, what benefit this gave me, not really anything, because the K is at 100%, they're not really helping anything. What I need to do is place somebody in one of these planets as a like a governor or something like that and then i'll be able to use these plants effectively at the moment i'm waging this war entirely from these two other clusters here i have a shipyard here i have a shipyard here they're both building ships constantly and then they're getting sent down here to further my war effort here it's also a shipyard here but it's honestly it's not running that well right now Here's another really good planet, class 77. Look at all these things, but it's taken me forever to build it out. So hopefully I, uh, I don't see much of a problem in winning this game here. Because even though I'm having a hard time invading some of these planets, like I ended up signing a peace treaty with these ones here after it became clear to me that I wasn't going to be able to invade wasn't going to be able to take that planet this civilization here for reasons i don't quite understand declared war on me and once again i am steamrolling over their civilization so how many moves do i have here so i have nine moves so that should be enough to get over here and attack so I, yeah so there are ships defending I will have no casualties. They're expected to have a total loss. So let's... Yeah, there's a graphical glitch there too. Up, oh, a couple of my ships can be upgraded. That's another thing you can do. Okay, I destroyed all of their... I destroyed all of the ships orbiting. So I should be able to attack this and invade it in the next turn. But I also got this one here. This phantom. And this... The Gaze. <laughs> the Gaze both be upgraded so here are the different forms of upgrade that i can use some of them like crew quarters are easy increase your hit points by 20 percent requires no extra anything command bridge doesn't cost anything doesn't cost uh this one will cost me antimatter and will increase my uh, missile attack and missile range and this is a missile ship so maybe i might want to do that this one doesn't cost anything, increases moves, shield strength, stealth field. Diablo Catalyst is something that 
I've picked up a number of times, which I'm not going to use on this ship because it's not a very good ship. But I'm just going to go with crew quarters. This one here. The Gaze One. <laughs> it's actually the largest ship in my fleet, in my entire military. Um, beam attack by a plus two. Beam cooldown minus 10%. It'll cost me Illyrium, but that is definitely worth it considering how beam heavy this ship is. Uh, where? Here's my transport. This one's... I don't... Haven't found the use for this ever since there. I think this is a core world, so I might be able to invade this using a transport. But I need to get a fleet up there to destroy the defending ships. So where are my fleets? They might be in orbit of a planet. Yeah, they're in orbit of this planet here. So... Alright, they don't have any moves left. So they must have... I just reloaded my save. I, last I played was like two days ago. So, I attacked this planet. They took that planet from orbit somehow. <laughs> it's a weird mechanic. I haven't quite wrapped my head around the implications of that. But this planet is now mine and all my... This fleet of five small ships, which is ten points of logistics, is in orbit and I have to kick it out in order to... Um, move on. I'll go up here and I'll see if I can take these planets here. So I'm going to move... Oh wait, no. Can't move on yet because I have a fleet that needs orders. Well, I have a ship here that needs orders. It's another phantom. So you have a constant run of ships, but it takes a while to get them out here. So I would really like to get a planet in this area, in this cluster, where I can build a shipyard so it makes my um, ferrying my attack forces forward easier. Uh, and get over here. Oops, sorry, I hit the microphone. Is that... Whose ship is that? Oh, what? Ah, oh, they're giving me money because they like me. Awesome. Uh, yep, yeah, that's a cargo ship. Of my, uh, former enemy. <laughs> they still don't like me, but... We're, uh... We understand each other. Alright, so... They don't have anything defending this planet. They have planetary defense, but that's not a ship. So, now I'm going to... So now they are sieging the planet. And they will do it, I believe, for one turn. I think the idea behind this is it gives the enemy civilization the chance to mobilize something to defend the planet. So if they had something in range, which I doubt... Uh, they don't. They definitely don't. They'd be able to get up here and destroy it, my fleet, before they finished their siege of the planet. But they won't be able to. Okay, so here's my fleet. It was ejected. It used it to move to eject, be ejected from the planet. Probably because I ordered it to, even though it didn't do it at the time. Okay, so up here. Yep, didn't make it in this turn. They're still out here. So it's going to be another two turns before they make it. I'm going to move my transport up here. Because I think I might need that to invade this planet here. Shipyard is idle. Uh, one of the other problems is um, the tech tree is a bit of a pain in the ass in this game. So, in the previous games, what you had was you had the entire tech tree open. So you could research whatever you needed to. Of course, it'd be a progression. This technology leads to this technology and all that kind of stuff. But anything that was available to be researched can be researched at any time. In this, there are, it only gives you five options at a time, and you choose one of those. 
And then there's a button up here which allows you to re-roll the technologies, but it increases your research time by 10%. That's not really good. So mostly I'm just researching the things that are served up to me. Which means only sometimes am I able to increase my weapon, like uh, weapon systems or armor systems or anything like that. And I have yet to unlock the technology or even see the technology, which will give me the ability to research the making larger ships or increasing my logistics capacity or anything like that. So, and look here, the tech tree, I can't access it. Research history, I can't access that either. So, I mean, once forged beam weapons becomes researched, finished in another two turns, I'll be able to build more powerful ships, but only a little bit more powerful. Definitely not powerful enough to uh, offset the fact that I can't put together a large enough fleet to take that planet. So these small, small things are all that I'm really able to do. And like, okay, so gunboat, small attack power. This one, escort small, escort small, interceptor tiny, interceptor tiny, interceptor tiny. It's tinies and smalls, and that's all I can really put together. I'm going to build a battle axe because, you know... I can't really build anything better. And then I'm just going to send this out here, and eventually I might end up using it to kill someone. <laughs> what do I got here? Oh, okay, I got a small fleet building up here. There's some pirates that I'm trying to destroy, but I this ship is a little bit too powerful for what I have sitting right here, so I'm just going to set this to sentry. Sentry, so it can sit there and... Uh, It'll let me know if something gets close to it, but it won't bother me every turn. Now, where is my shipyard up here? What is this building? Oh, it's building a battle axe. It's taken forever, though. This planet is not that well suited to be building shit. No, oh, no. It's okay. It can't go in the sentry because this ship is too close. So I'm just going to skip the turn. There's another fleet. No, nope, they have just this one. Get up here. Trotsky. <laughs> yep, okay. I made uh, this a fleet that was sieging this planet successfully sieged. So let's get them back out. Nope, can't do it because they used up their turn and... Am I in my next turn? <laughs> it jumped into that turn real quick. Alright, some planet finished doing something. I don't know what. I don't really have the ability to build anything here unless I build over something that's already constructed. So I'm just going to go and hit economic stimulus a few times. At the end of four turns, it'll produce 25 25 credits up here. Not a lot of money, but what else am I going to have this planet do? Here's another planet, but I do have the ability to build some shit, so what can I do here? I can either right-click on this, or left-click, rather, and it gives me some standard things that I can build, or I can have the unique improvements, which are... Potentially, you can only build one per galaxy, or one per civilization, or one per planet. Say this one here is a one per galaxy. If I manage to build this, finish building this before anyone else builds their own, no one else can build it. So, uh, vastly increases influence of the civilization and planet. This one here is a one per planet, so... I can build one on this planet, and I can build one on another planet, but not two on any one planet. Uh, one per planet. Where is... I'm looking for a one per civilization. I may have built all that stuff before. So I'm just gonna let this beacon of 
Babylon go? It's going to take 19 turns, so it's possible someone else could build it before I finish building theirs before mine gets built. But I doubt it. Everyone else is pretty bad at building things. Now, I did not name any of these planets. These are just uh, the autogen names that the devs came up with. Alright, so here is a colonizer ship, which may be another bug in the game. Every time I destroyed an enemy shipyard, I ended up getting a colonizer ship, which, as awesome as it is to get a colonizer ship, a colony ship, it doesn't have any citizens on board. So it's actually useless in terms of... Uh, it's actually useless in terms of colonizing anyone. Now, if I could get a... Uh, if I can get an explorer ship out here, I could research, check all the space junk. But this thing... I set it out just like, you know, go and explore. Actually, you know what? Check out this place. Check out this uh, sector. Um, now you... You just wait. One turn. See, the AI... The, the uh, enemy turns actually zip through pretty quick. Galactic Civilizations uh, 3, once the map got populated, it would take a while. Now, so forged, forged beam weapons were completed. So, choose a new tech. Now, it leads to beam miniaturization is what it said, but that did not appear on the research candidate list. So, artificial brains, Increases your research. Warp theory increases the moves of your ship. Cultural outreach increases your influence. Energy dissipation strategies better shields. Starbase refinery better starbase mining. <laughs> None of these seem all of that. I'm going to go artificial brains only because it's the biggest one. <laughs> all right, my turn. Get up there. No casualties. Oh shit, am I attacking? Oh shit, that's not even... I'm not at war with them. I'm an idiot. I'm not at war with them. I'm at war with them. And I can't take that planet. Get down here anyway. I, I, I sent my fleet to an attack an enemy that's not my enemy. Alright, these are like pirates or some shit. I can't I can't engage this thing. It's too big. It's too powerful. Maybe if I cluster these little ships together into a fleet, they can stand a chance. Nope. It's really slow though. Can only move two turns at a time. So that opens up the possibility of just hitting it with a missile barrage from a distance. Um, nothing yet. Yeah, transport, I know. I sent you on a wild goose chase. Oh, some planet did something. Where was the other... No, I'm on the wrong sector. There's a planet down here that I... Yeah, okay, there it is. Are you... Can you move? Oh, yeah, okay, I got nine, eight moves. Look at the graphical glitches. It doesn't even launch an attack from the ship. It just comes from the side. I noticed that once, regardless of how many moves you actually have, once you engage in a battle, all the remaining moves of your fleet are expended. So I can't attack multiple targets with one fleet. Did I destroy their... Yep, I destroyed their everything. So next turn, I'll be able to attack. They also have a starbase that... 
I should be able to do without deal with without taking significant damage. We'll note that my whole fleet has taken minor damage, but nothing that I'm going to be concerned about. Yeah, n insignificant. Oh, influence. Another carryover from the previous games in the series are the spheres of influence. Now, they're definitely not they're definitely not having as much to do with the gameplay in this as it did in the previous games. You know, the game's not complete yet, so who knows what it'll be like at the final release. But everything that you have admits influence. As how much influence points, it's going to depend on like how big your population is or what kind of technology you have, what structures you have on the surface. But here is our sphere of influence now our sphere of influence comes in contact with theirs and since their influence at this spot like right here you can actually see they have 82 percent of the influence i have 18. over on this side of the border i have 100 percent of the influence so they have a greater influence with this planet so it's this big bubble my bubble's smaller. In the event that one of my planets becomes engulfed in their influence, or vice versa, you run the risk of having the planet do what's called a culture flip. If a culture flip happens, the planet becomes a property of the other civilization. It doesn't happen immediately, and it doesn't always even reliably happen, so you can't count on a culture flip happening even if you're in a position where it should and I've yet to see it happen in uh, in this playthrough so I don't know for certain that that is a feature in Galsif 4 oh okay so this alien civilization wants to trade with me they want me to give them drone production technology and smuggler colony which is a um, which is a strategic resource they want open borders, which, you know, is not something that I would consider a trade good. And a technology ministry of defense. Ministry of defense. So, I do want open borders with them. I kind of don't want to give them a lot of really good technologies. See, look at this. 21 weeks, weeks to research four weeks to research smuggler colony open borders open borders actually benefits the both of us so let's try to get open borders uh, I can actually get open borders for nothing I can just give that to them and in fact they're willing to give me that technology for the open borders so this is just nothing more than a benefit to me Open borders are really useful because if you don't have open borders, anytime an, uh, another civilization's ship comes into your sphere of influence, what will end up happening is it will have a negative impact on your relations with that civilization. So let's say... That was the draft, right? I don't see them in my area. But let's say one of their ships, like the Blues, uh, this one's almost in my sphere of influence. And it will be in a second because it's clearly heading in that direction. Blue, Altera over here, and Alterans. I believe we have an open borders treaty. We do. So, when they move into that area, if we didn't, then that would count as like a negative thing. But it won't because we have an open borders treaty. Now, greens over here with the sword, they do not have an open borders treaty with me. So the fact that I have a starbase sitting right here, mining this right over here, they don't like it. And it's negatively impacting our relations. Now, I could try negotiating an open borders treaty with them, but they're... Our relations are actually rather poor. It's hostile. 
skill and diplomacy is a plus, but I have a star base in their zone of influence, so it's a negative two. Military buildup concerns them, negative one. Shared borders, negative one. And we were previously at war with them, negative two. So I'm not going to be able to negotiate an open borders treaty. I need to increase relations with them quite a bit, and I don't see that happening. I'm not too worried about them, though, because, like I said before, they are not militarily a threat to me. And, in fact, the reason why I ended up, like, eventually just signing a peace treaty with them was so I can consolidate my military on these other ones. These, uh, what are these, what the hell are these people called? These weird plant people. Eh, they don't even want a friggin' peace treaty with me. I tried. I tried. Don't let anyone say that I'm a warmonger. I tried declaring or a peace treaty. They didn't want it. <laughs> Weird plant freaks. Oh, look at this. Okay, so this is trying to attack my little fleet here. And it would probably win. Because it's much bigger. Even though I have better technology, they got a much bigger thing. Much bigger ship. So I'm going to retreat. It's slow as hell, though, so it's never going to catch me. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> the exile. Uh, okay, so this is a... Sometimes civilizations will contact you saying that like something's happening, what do you want to do about it? This one's saying that they're exiling somebody from their empire. People is popular with their people. I can... I can kill this person <laughs> when they move into my area. Or I can not, and it re reduces relations. The, um, uh, I'm just going to do it. Because the dredgen tend to be pretty hostile. And I don't want to go to war with another civilization right now. I want to plant it in the sector that's useful for building things. All these plants are really just sort of dragging my empire down a little bit. I want a good planet. This would be a good planet, but it's too... Too powerful for me to take. Oh, okay. So I got this planet now. I'm not even paying attention. <laughs> It's class three, class three, class three is too low. I want something that's like at least a class 10 if I'm going to turn it into a core world. This one's the best class 12. Maybe I should do that. Yeah. What's it called? Tyroski? That's some weird ass names. All right, so governors. Here's the planet right here. I don't have anybody ready for me, but this dude, highest loyalty, so I'm going to get this dude to do it. Boom. All right. Now that I got a governor on there, all of the planets in this sector are now uh, operating in tribute to that one planet. There are a lot of planets, so maybe this isn't going to be a dump. <laughs> first things first, though build a shipyard. Then after that, I'll start building out the infrastructure of this planet. That's uh, manufacturing. Let's get that in there, too. Seems like actually a pretty good setup I have here. Not necessarily the best planet, but there's so many planets giving it tribute. Like, look at this one here. This one's furthest away. It's, um... Oh, I thought it would have told me... Oh, Decay, 59%. This one's really close, though, so Decay is negative 6%. <laughs> oh, ne uh, 6%, okay. What do I have here? Oh, okay. Still waiting. 
Still waiting on when I can fight there. I destroyed the shipyard the, these uh, peacekeepers had in the area. They just had this one ship I couldn't do anything about. Because the fleet that I had expended itself fighting it. Alright, so now that's a fleet of three ships. Maybe I can destroy whatever they were running from. Oh, wait, hold on. I got my fleet down here, right? Eject. Oh, no, I'm still on the same turn. I'm an idiot. Ah, uh, shoot, look at this. There is... Marasak? It's some kind of alien, space-born alien that will attack my ships if it gets near them. Uh, that's a shipyard, though. This is an actual ship. It can move four. I'm definitely going to end up losing this ship if I screw around too much. So, Any of these planets colonizable? Oh, no. Wrong word of direction. Oh, yeah. I might lose that. <laughs> it, yeah, it's going to wreck my ship. No, nope, nope. It didn't for some reason. Okay, these people want me to go to war with somebody that I'm not going to go to war with. A minor civilization. Where am I? Uh, no, yeah, you... Wait. Ah, get out of their area. <laughs> Alright, so uh, this fleet here. They got a starbase here. I don't know what the starbase is for. It's military starbase. But I don't know why it's here. It's my enemy though, and I can destroy it with no casualties, so I'm gonna. So I took a little bit of damage there. What took the hit? That's not bad. But I used up all my moves in that fight. So, they're going to have to wait a little bit. I might move this fleet over and see if that is something that can actually engage this planet here, but that's going to be it's going to be a bit. If I can get better logistics technology, then yeah, then I'd go and I'd I'd start fucking some things up, but <laughs> I if I can get more than 10 logistics points in a fleet, this planet would already be mine. Alright, so... This thing can barely move. It can only move two moves per turn. So I can actually, from outside of its range, hit it with a missile barrage. How much damage that does? Minimal. Minimal damage. But it's something. <laughs> How about this fleet? Can this fleet... Oh, they're giving me money. Those are the navigators that the other ones wanted me to declare war on for some reason. It's a shipyard here. I should destroy that. Let's, uh, let's get rid of this space station. Again, I don't know what it's here for, but I do want it destroyed. Okay, I actually lost a ship in that fight. I had five ships here, and I only have... Now I only have four. Oh, out of range. Whatever. Uh, I also want to destroy that shipyard, though. So let's get this other fleet up here to do that. 
because if I destroy the shipyard, they won't be able to reinforce this planet anymore. And they're already a little bit stronger than I'd like them to be. I'm not sure. Maybe that military starbase was researching this Ascension Crystal. Ascension is a victory condition that you can have if you uh, if you get enough Ascension Crystals you can um, well ascend and that's how you win. But it takes a while. Oh, why doesn't this shed, this planet, have a military uh, shipyard? Uh, both shipyards were finished. I can't research or oceanic worlds either, or else I'd colonize that planet. Like, everything is... The tech tree is kind of a mess at the moment. Oh, everything finished building. That was a... About time. No, oh, it made it through. The aliens just didn't attack it. But anyway, this I, I didn't want this video to get too long. But that's like the idea of where this game is going. It's unfinished though. But, you know, 